As a medical student and now a doctor, the threat of a burnout was and is always just around the corner. But here's how I avoid it and how you can avoid it too. Hey there, only person watching YouTube. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ajay. I'm a doctor from Bangalore, India. If you're already subscribed, welcome back. I love you to the stars and back. I've experienced severe burnouts before. First, during my first year medical exams, second during my final year medical exams and third when I was studying for USMLE. Just to give you an idea, my med school exams would be, you know, spread over one and a half, two months. And it's quite easy to get burnt out when you have to be in that optimum exam ready mode for such a long time. And now as a doctor, I have shifts ranging from 30 to 34 hours without sleep sometimes. I'm currently not working those crazy 30 hour shifts. In fact, I'm not currently working at all. For the past few months, I'm on a break studying for an exam. And strangely, even though this feels like a more relaxed time, the threat of a burnout actually feels much more closer. Maybe it's the staying at home all day. Maybe I miss working in the hospital. I don't know. But I get more worked up writing these scripts and, you know, studying for four to five hours every day than doing a 30 hour shift in the hospital. But I'm not expecting to experience any more burnouts. And that's because I've built habits and systems that help me keep burnout away. I learned this by reading books, watching YouTube videos and implementing, you know, all these things in my life, figuring out what actually works. And today I want to share those with you guys. And like I always say, there are no overnight transformations. So you don't have to start doing all of these things at once. Just take small but real steps every day and keep progressing. Like how James Clear in his book Atomic Habits says, if you just improve yourself by 1% every day, just 1%, by the end of the year, you would have improved yourself by 37 times. So make small changes, but make real changes. All right, let's get into it. First one, stop studying or working before you exhaust yourself. All right, this sounds like common sense, but not many people actually follow this, right? I mean, <laughs> I also fall into this pit sometimes. We've been all fed this idea of work till you can't work anymore by the hustle culture, right? Oh, hustle culture, God, I hate that. In fact, the whole of hustle culture is built around this principle of work till you drop or something, something similar like that. If working more or working harder made you happier and successful, construction workers should technically be the happiest and the most successful people in the world. But do you know who are the happiest and the most successful people in the world? The smart ones. The ones who know when to work and more importantly, when to stop. They can be construction workers, they can be painters, they can be lawyers, doctors, engineers, architects, students, artists, basically anyone who's smart. And these smart people are successful because they know their limits and they stay in it. If you try to push your mind and your body to work more when it's already tired, stress increases exponentially. And think about it, you're not really benefiting from this extra work. Not only does the quality of your work suffer, you won't have the interest to do the same work or to study, you know, the next day. Well, what should you do? Just listen to your mind and stop working or stop studying when your mind says it's exhausted. If you have to continue working, that's okay. Take a break and do something that refreshes you. Take a walk, listen to music, talk to a friend, anything that recharges your batteries. And once your batteries are recharged, come back and work again. Exhaustion is basically your brain experiencing an imbalance between certain neurotransmitters. And I just want to call these good neurotransmitters as the good brain juice and the bad or the tiring neurotransmitters as bad brain juice. If you just give your brain some time to make some more good brain juice and get rid of the bad brain juice, you can start focusing and get back to your work at hand. In relation to studying, the whole concept of Pomodoro technique is based on this principle. So basically you focus and study for 25 to 30 minutes and after that you take 5 to 10 minutes break. So in the studying you use up all the good brain juice and when you're resting you make it back all again. Who would have imagined neuroscience could be made so simple and a bit lame. In relation to work, thankfully it is not as mentally demanding as studying is so we can continuously work for one to two hours take a water cooler break or a loo break or a coffee break 
and then come back refreshed and work for another few hours and then go for a lunch break and then come back and work for a few more hours and then we get to go home and it's usually at the end of the day that our brains minds are really tired and we try to push it at this point and that's bad that adds disproportionately more stress so listen to your brain and stop when it says stop it doesn't have to be a full stop or a dead end stop for now do something that refreshes you and energizes you and come back and do that again this will make you much more productive you can come back and get much more done than otherwise and hey as a bonus low levels of stress and what better tool can you have in your arsenal than a refreshed and a motivated brain and what better thing can you do right now than smashing the like button on this video point number 2 caffeinate before you crash i used to drink a lot of coffee if you see my instagram page the bio still says coffee connoisseur but for the past 3 months i have quit coffee and i feel great that's a discussion for another day but for people who drink coffee and tea or anything that basically has caffeine in it the way or the timing of when people drink it is kind of wrong think about it most people drink coffee or tea or energy drinks or any caffeinated beverages when they feel tired right yeah that's wrong why do i say that well how does caffeine work basically when you've been working or studying for a long time the bad brain juice called adenosine right it builds up and this goes and sits on some brain receptors called adenosine receptors and this makes the brain feel tired what caffeine does is that it blocks these receptors and keeps the adenosine away adenosine comes and like woo goes back i should probably not do something like that again but basically what you're doing is that you're tricking your brain to not feel tired that's what caffeine does so what happens when you drink coffee when you're already tired most of the adenosine receptors are already used up by adenosine and the caffeine won't work as well as it should if my juice based neuroscience bores you uh, let me phrase it in another way let me tell you in english drinking coffee or tea doesn't help much if you're already tired sure it makes you feel better when you drink coffee when you're tired but by using this one weird trick that doctors hate you can make yourself feel much 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 better and what is that simple drink coffee before you start feeling tired or before you start having that groggy sensation of uh, ah i need a coffee right now how do you figure this out simple again just try to think of the time of the day when you have the coffee maybe you have one in the morning and one in the evening or if you're someone like me you have one in the morning one in the afternoon and one in the evening as well just observe for a few days at what time you start having that ah uh, i need a coffee right now feeling and basically drink coffee an hour or half an hour before you start developing that feeling so imagine this is your energy level and this is the time this is energy this is time so imagine your energy levels goes like this and you drink coffee here it goes back like this but after watching this video you drink coffee here before you are completely tired so your energy level goes like this and then it goes like this so which would you want to have this or this you decide now please don't get me wrong i'm not recommending increasing your caffeine consumption please be responsible with how much caffeine you take in taking a lot of it is terrible for your health what i'm saying is how much ever cups of coffee or tea you're having just move it around to find the ideal time to have it point number 3 afternoon naps imagine if god comes down and gives you a cheat code for better productivity less stress and better energy levels would you take it you will definitely take it right and if at this moment you're asking me what is the cheat code did you not read the title of this section afternoon naps there's so much research saying that this helps productivity and mental clarity mental health if you're not adding this to your days you're doing yourself a disservice why are afternoon naps effective we humans are animals whether we like it or not and we are all conditioned to have low energy levels after our lunch one of the main reasons why this happens is that 
after a meal a lot of blood goes to your digestive system to you know help with the digestion and absorption so less blood goes to your brain and your muscles so you feel sleepy and tired and this is why you feel extra sleepy when you have a large meal so what should you do simple don't fight your body don't try to fight nature take a nap i'm not telling you to sleep for like an hour or something just take a nap for 15 to 20 minutes and you'll wake up feeling refreshed and motivated to do your work again and there's nothing bad or lazy about this this is what humans have been doing for a millennia we were all taking rest in the afternoon and the italians even have a nice word for it they call it the afternoon siesta i don't know if i pronounced it right it was natural and widely accepted as a general practice for people to sleep in the afternoons till the industrial revolution happened and people started to have 9 to 5 jobs and when you're working for someone else and you're getting paid by the hour sleeping at work was seen as lazy and unproductive but now we have scientific evidence that napping actually makes us much more productive that's why google offices have sleep pods at this point you are like dude if i sleep i'll sleep off for 4 hours and i wake up only for dinner that's great you can have dinner and you can sleep again <laughs> just kidding There's a ninja trick to avoid this. It all depends on how you take the nap. If you lie down on a couch like this or like this, yeah, you're probably going to sleep for a long time. But if you use the smart nap position as I'd like to call it, where you fold your hands and you sleep on a table like this, you're not going to sleep for a long time. Mostly because either your back or your hands are going to start hurting. in like 30 minutes now 15 to 20 minutes is like the ideal time according to studies but i find 30 minutes to be my sweet spot if you are finding that you are oversleeping keep an alarm for 20 or 25 minutes and get up when the alarm rings and over time you'll train your brain to wake up at that time how i include this in my busy days is by planning right now i'm studying at home so i get to decide how long i want to sleep but if i'm working as a doctor in a hospital things become a little bit tricky because you'll never know when a patient uh, would need you when a patient would become unstable etc so what i do in such situations is in any job you'll get at least 30 minutes as a lunch break unless you are a slave working in a cave somewhere and then you wouldn't be allowed to watch youtube videos anyway so what are you doing here? Okay that was probably not a good joke Most days I get at least 30 minutes as lunch break on good days I get an hour and on those days it's easy to get time to sleep but on busy days I usually plan it with my colleagues in such a way that I allow them to take 30 minutes off I take on their work when they go for lunch and when they come back they take on my work when I take my 30 minutes break 10 minutes for lunch and 20 sweet sweet minutes for napping I come back to the ward and I'm filled with a lot of energy and I can get a lot of stuff done if I can make time for it in my busy job anyone can make time for it it's all about prioritizing and planning and managing your time well some of you may ask isn't that a waste of time you're using up 20 minutes that you can you know see patients or work or study in that time the way i see it is instead of being groggy miserable wanting five cups of coffee for like 2 hours i take 20 minutes off to sleep and i come back and i'm actually way more productive and it also feels like i'm compartmentalizing my days i can work in the morning session as hard as i want without worrying about getting tired or getting stressed because i know i can have a nap in the afternoon and then once i have a nap it kind of feels like i'm starting the day afresh try this for a few days if it works for you great if it doesn't work for you you can always just say that i gave you a bad tip but hey this tip was given to you by science and not me Trick number 4 regular exercise all right this is another cheat code right here i could make a hour long video about the benefits of regular exercise but for the sake of keeping this points under 30 seconds let me point just a few important ones first it's obviously great for your health second you become more attractive physically if you are disciplined about exercise and diet and hey who doesn't want to look good and third and most importantly It feels so damn good it's such a great stress reliever. If you haven't experienced a runner's high or a lifter's high, god you're missing out on so much. I'll pick these highs over other highs any day any time. Again, all of this is backed by science. There are a lot of studies that say regular exercise is great for our 
both physical and mental well-being. You can either work out in the morning, afternoon or evening. It just depends on your preference. Personally, I see exercise as a stress reliever, so doing it in the evening after a stressful day just makes sense to me. Well, now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, okay, I know exercise is good for me. I know exercise is going to make me feel great and I really want to exercise, but I just don't have the time. Uh, well, you have time. You just have to prioritize exercise. Look, like I used to play squash for an hour every day, even during my final medical school exams. Like I would literally be having a major exam the next day and I would be playing squash like clockwork from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. every day. And my very average squash partner, uh, my best friend Mayank, who's, who says he is a CA and who also shit comments on my videos, he used to say, dude, are you sure your exam is tomorrow? Shouldn't you be studying? I used to tell him, yeah, but this one hour of exercise it's kind of equivalent to having two hours of study and it worked really well for me. Even when working like crazy work hours, like when I was in OBG or OBGYN, if there are any Americans here, in OBG, my work schedule was crazy. I used to do double shifts every day. So minimum 12 to 13 hours of work for an entire month without a day off, no weekly offs, nothing. Like every single day you go and work for 12, 13 hours. I used to go to gym for an hour almost every day after working. And my colleagues used to ask, look, dude, are you crazy? Like, how can you exercise after, you know, doing so much work? And I would say, well, it's because I exercise, I can work my ass off here. But honestly, that's how it was. Because I exercised, I kept the stress at bay. I didn't burn out and I could work really hard. So if I can manage to find time to exercise and if people leading busier lives than me, like CEOs, bankers, and other such fancy people can find time in their day to exercise, no matter who you are, you can find time for exercise. Replace excuses with exercise and you'll feel much less stressed, much more happy, and generally much more relaxed. Point number five, sleep. Okay, here's the thing. Worst case scenario, if you're unable to do any of the other mentioned things, I request you to at least nail this one thing. It's criminal how much we take good sleep for granted. Sleep time is that part of the day when whatever we studied during the day becomes consolidated in our memory. It's the time of a day our body grows. It's the time of a day our muscles grow if you're trying to build muscles. It's the time of the day our body repairs all the damages that have happened to it and all the organs in it throughout the day. And most importantly, it prepares you to start the next day feeling really fresh. And if you think about it, sleeping is the closest thing we have to a switch on, switch off, switch for our brain. Like in the night, you're tired and you switch off and the morning you switch it on and you're feeling fresh all over again. Isn't that cool? And most people don't use the power of sleeping right. They either don't get enough length of sleeping or you know time of sleeping or they don't get good quality of sleeping. So how long should you sleep? According to science, it's eight to nine hours. That's like the sweet spot. But if you have a very busy lifestyle, try to get at least six hours. I try to get an average of eight and a half hours when I'm not working crazy days. And on the crazy days, as I like to call them, I get like three hours of sleep or sometimes no sleep at all. So that happens like once or twice a week. But otherwise, on most days, I get eight and a half hours of sleep. Coming to quality of sleep, it's a big topic that I can talk to for like an hour or something. But off the top of my head, there are two things that you can do to improve your quality of sleep right from this day. First point, if you like drinking coffee or tea, your last cup should be at least six hours before you go to sleep. Fortunately, I can sleep like a baby even after drinking a cup of coffee, like right after the cup of coffee, I can go to bed and can sleep like a baby. But for people who have some issues with their sleeping, having their last cup six hours before bedtime helps them sleep faster and have a better quality of sleep. Point number two, have a nice relaxing ritual before you go to bed. If you go to bed feeling all restless and agitated, you are probably not going to sleep well. But going to bed calm and relaxed increases your chance of getting really good sleep. And how do you do that? Simple, find things that 
calm you down there are many things there are like bedtime stories and yeah there are bedtime stories for grown ups as well or you could listen to relaxing music or you could listen or watch one of those asmr videos and all of these are available for free on the internet or here on youtube there are also paid apps like calm i have never used it but i've seen really good reviews about it but hashtag not sponsored but the thing that i like to do and the thing that I think people should do more is read before bed. Read from an actual book and not from a digital screen. And no, uh, reading Instagram captions doesn't count as reading. I personally prefer reading on my Kindle because it's so convenient and it has e-ink. So basically it's not like a digital screen, there's no blue light. It's kind of awesome. I read for 20ish minutes and I go to bed. when i start feeling sleepy now i recommend that you read some fiction because if you <laughs> sit and read non fiction you'll probably get too engrossed in the story and you'll probably end up reading it for like 2 am in the morning and we don't want that at least when we have to you know study or work the next day that was it i hope this video helps you stay a little bit stress free and smash through your work days just like you smash that like button i'll see you in the next video till then take care stay happy and healthy bye bye